Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today. Now, I just want to say thanks to Matt and Ancient Architects for mentioning me in his video here, and I thought this was just an excellent video. A lot of questions on the Giza Plateau as far as how in the world whoever built that did indeed construct that place. Let's go over to Google Earth here. There's a few things I want to talk about. I've had a lot of questions, and one thing I was going to make or throw into my Q&A video that I'm working on, but I just thought I would talk about it here today. But here, Cairo, ancient Giza. This, I believe, was an island at one time in prehistory. But now let's go down to the middle pyramid, that same corner I talked about in my video from last Sunday. And if we go over here, we can tell where the mound started is if you look along here and who knows how deep the sand goes here you can tell where the mound started because of the stratigraphic layers here it's pretty even and it's going straight across here and then when you go down here that's when they start going at an upward angle so we know the mound started right about here so this whole way from the back corner of the quarry here if you want to call it that but from the back corner all the way up to this area here but this whole region was the beginning of the upward slope of the mound and whoever built the pyramids they just shaved this whole surface down so clearly the mound was over here on this side the west side of the quarry this is where it started on this side and they shaved it down vertically and they shaved it across the top so this whole area where the pyramids were built was even in areas and that's not all of it what is under the sand here is truly remarkable do people know a lot about this well I'm sure a lot of you do but some of you don't so let's just play a clip from the Joe Rogan experience where John Anthony West talks about the base under here ah, they're here what's we'll, we'll up you see where these people are walking? Mm -hmm. Do you see that this one block? You see those people? Yes. There, and then all the way down where the third guy down there is walking, there's another, it goes down to there, and then it so goes. It's like a 20 that's foot a, plus it's block. It's about 20 by 30 foot block. Wow. And then next, do the next slide. That's what it is, edge on. Those are the blocks. People walking on top, that's what we were just looking at. So those blocks are about between six and eight feet thick. Go back to the bottom one. So not only they're six and eight feet thick, but they're stacked on top of each other. That's right. To build it up to that level. Wow. Yeah. Six and eight feet thick and then yeah. stacked on top of another one that's of a similar and height. And if you go poking back into it, it's all, you see the joints between them are mm -hmm. pretty rough. But in fact, if you poke back in there, you see that they fit together, that you can't you can barely get a credit card between them. It's just, that's, that's, you know, lots and lots of weather over lots and lots of years. So not only are the just the building of the pyramids an incredible feat but the leveling of the whole Giza plateau which was probably very uneven and it had mounds in it originally but the evening of the whole Giza plateau with what equipment did the fourth dynasty Egyptians mr. Laner in Hawass did the fourth dynasty Egyptians just chip away this large mound and carve away all these massive stone blocks well I think that's absolutely ridiculous but somehow they just shaved the whole plateau into level platforms, cut stone steps as bases of the pyramids, and probably used the mound, the big slabs on the mound over here, to create a massive platform for the big pyramids as far as a base around it. Who the heck did this? I think that's an incredible mystery. Clearly, that's what they were doing out in front of the Sphinx Temple when they were taking the blocks from around the Sphinx and then putting them in front here and forming what they call the Sphinx Temple in ancient texts is called the Temple of Teptuef, the Temple of Anubis upon his hill in the divine booth, which means enclosure. And whoever was carving the Giza Plateau was carving these big shafts in the earth, such as the one at Zayat al Ariane. The fourth dynasty Egyptians with their hammers and copper chisels we're not doing this now in my video last weekend I showed where this corner 
I believe it's the southwest corner of the middle pyramid. The base of it is carved out of natural carved steps in the bedrock. Do we see that on the third pyramid? And here is the base of the third pyramid, and this is what the base of the Great Pyramid and the Middle Pyramid looked like one time, just a lot of rubble. Where did those casing stones go to? On the big pyramids, I'll show you in a minute here. Now, is there evidence that the small pyramid is actually constructed into the bedrock? Well, down at the very northwest corner here, I think we have evidence of that, because here you see the stone blocks, and then all of a sudden, right at the base, it changes, and you don't see any block-type formations down here in the lowest level. So I think this hints at evidence that the same thing is going on here in the small pyramid also. But I'll let you guys check that out if you want on Google Earth. That would be the northwest corner I'm looking at here, I think. Now, I've had a lot of questions, and I was going to include this in a Q&A video that I'm going to be uploading sometime in the near future, but a lot of questions. Where did the casing stones go that came off of the middle two and probably the smaller pyramid also? Well, I don't think that's any great mystery, but I, now, I haven't heard a lot of people state clearly where the casing stones went, but I think there are two places. Here is one. This is the Mosque Madrasa of Sultan Hassan, built in the mid-1300s. There's documentation of them being transported across here. It would have had to have been across the Nile and then used to build this mosque, built in the mid-1300s. And then in the 1800s, there was another place where they were transported to, and it's fairly close nearby. It is this place right here. This is the Mosque of Muhammad Ali. And no, it's not the boxer, but let's go down here and just take a peek if we can get a look on Google Earth. But here is what the Mosque of Muhammad Ali looks like. Some large stones used to construct this place. And writers who were writing on Egypt in the 1800s documented that this is where some of the casing stones went, the ones that were left over but it went to build the mosque here of Muhammad Ali. And some of them, if you look closely, you can kind of get in your mind's eye where some of these stones went. But that's kind of keeping the ball rolling as far as how the Giza Plateau was constructed. A lot of questions, who in the heck had the ability just to carve stone slabs and make terrace platforms into a sacred site? I think that is a pretty good question. I don't think the Egyptians were doing it. They built some incredible monuments. I have shown them. But I don't think they had the ability to do this, what we see on the Giza Plateau today. Hope you thought that was interesting. You all have a very nice day.